Welcome back, everyone. We have been experiencing the paranormal, supernatural, and very unique here on EVB Live today. So have you ever wondered when you are watching a magic show if what you're seeing right in front of you is actually really happening? Well, scientists from the Barrow Neurological Institute wonder that, too, and they've been researching how the brain reacts to magic tricks being performed right in front of them. We want to welcome right now Dr. Susana Martinez-Conde and Dr. Stephen Magnick to EVB Live. And we also want to welcome magic Tony Barnhart, who is with Haley. This is going to be good. Let's start off, though, with Tony, who's going to perform some magic, and then we will have the doctors explain what exactly happened. So, Tony, take it away. Absolutely. Hi, Hi Haley. Hi. So, since we're talking about science today, we're going to try a little experiment here. Okay. But this experiment has to begin with you selecting a card. Okay. Anything you like. And once you're happy with the one you've selected, show it to the camera. I'm not going to look. I'm not going to look at any monitors, I promise. <laughs> Okay. Great. And sh shove it back into the deck anywhere you like, somewhere near the middle. Okay. Very nice. Yeah, we'll push it right shove in there. It in there. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, I have friends who believe that crystals hold these incredible powers for transmitting thoughts. So I thought we'd put this to the test today. Okay. You have a card somewhere in this deck. I do. And I'm going to have you try to transmit your thought to me. So I brought along some crystals. I spared no expense. I brought 10,000 crystals with me today. <laughs> of salt. Okay. So, your job is to transmit your thought of card to the base of that salt shaker. It'll through to shoot up through the crystals. It'll be magnified. It'll shoot out the holes and hit me right in the brain. Okay. Yeah, we could wish I'm for a bigger about it target. Now. <laughs> <laughs> right. So. Okay. Ooh. Thinking it's hard. a red card. Is that correct? That's correct. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> it's a diamond. Is that correct? That's correct. Oh, this is incredible. Uncanny stuff. <laughs> it's the ace of diamonds, in fact. Is that correct? That is correct. Amazing. But what's even more impressive is that if you look through the deck, there is no ace of diamonds. Check it out. Okay. There is no ace of diamonds in the deck because the ace of diamonds is the card that I keep underneath my salt shaker. Oh. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Okay, so now we turn to the expert here, awesome. Dr. Susanna Martinez Conde. What explain what happened? How did Tony do that? This is an excellent example of how magicians are able to manipulate our attention and even our consciousness, sometimes even better than we scientists can do in the lab. And what happened right here is that Tony put the cord, as you can imagine, underneath the salt shaker, but he did it in front of our eyes, he did it in front of the audience, he was in plain view, but because he can direct our attention so very well, we were not able to see it. We were looking without seeing. That's can you what was that I again looking very at? What, what was I looking at when you were so when your, you did that? Your attention was being captured by the spreading of the cards oh, across the table. Oh, and you just uh, oh, I just saw it as soon as he it he did it simultaneously. Yeah. So how did you pick out that card in the first uh, place when I put it back in there? Oh, we I, don't talk about. Okay. See, that was the part that I was okay. actually curious <laughs> because how did you pick a particular one? Very fascinating. Okay, let's go to the second trick. All right. Let's, let's do another one. In fact, everybody at home can take part in this demonstration. Okay. I, I've got a selection of cards here, five face cards. I'm going to show them to the camera. I want you to think of one of the cards in that group. Everybody at home got one? Mm -hmm. You got one? Mm -hmm. uh, yep. All right. I'm going to do my best to remove the card that you're thinking of from the group. Here we go. Uh -huh. I think I got it. Did I get it? <gasps> what? <laughs> yeah. What? For me, he did. Yeah, me too. Huh. Did. Okay. Yeah, Dr. Macknick, <laughs> explain that because everyone picked their own card. How in the world did he take that away? Well, the way he did it was he exploited a, um, a fact about the brain, and, which is that we don't actually notice when things change. Uh, across a disruption. So basically this is called change blindness mm -hmm. and it's a memory illusion in which you saw a set of cards but he got you to pay attention to just one. He the just one card you, that you picked. It doesn't okay. matter which one you picked, you just picked one of them and you paid attention to that and by paying attention to that you enhanced that card but you suppressed everything else. That's the way attention works. And then what he did is he used sleight of hand to remove all of all the of cards. All of it? Wait, and put a totally four different more cards back up. Oh. And you didn't know that they'd changed because oh you weren't paying attention. And so oh this, my goodness. this 
this is happening to us all the time in our real life, the way that we interact with other people and, and uh, you know, like with movie cuts and, uh, or, you know, scene cuts in movies and other types right. of things, that there's change blindness happening. Where did you find those other cards? We don't talk about that yeah, either. That's, that's <laughs> okay, now, so don't just going to stop asking why questions. Why is this so important then? I mean, apply it to daily life. Now that, you know, we've got kind of the, the lay of the land of why we focus in on certain things, but how does that help you guys? Well, what we're interested in um, as neuroscientists is understanding how these processes work of attention and awareness in the brain. And it turns out that magicians can manipulate through, through, uh, through thousands of years of development of, of magic. They've developed these techniques for uh, manipulating an attention and awareness better than everybody else in the world, including scientists. Mm -hmm. And so by learning about their techniques, we hope to increase the rate of discovery in cognitive science in order to improve how it is that we uh, develop techniques for neural rehabilitation, for instance, for, for patients in the clinic or for uh, even students at school. For instance, people who have Alzheimer's. For or, example. Or, you know, some kind of when, when the brain is not functioning properly. That's how you try to understand and get people to focus in on particular things? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, we hope that this kind of research will be able to help people who have all types of uh, cognitive decline because uh, even if they have lost some brain function or some cognitive function by focusing their remaining capabilities the way that magicians do, we can increase the quality of life of these people and this is something that goes with the mission of the barrel to help people with uh, diseases such as Alzheimer's or trauma right. or any other kind of neurological deficit. And I know that you guys are having a very special event. It's also a fundraiser too. So we'll We'll show our folks the information right here. It is called The Magic and the Brain at the Phoenix Theater, and it's happening Monday, September 17th at 7 p.m., and it benefits the uh, Barrow Neurological Institute at St. Joe's. Thank you so much. That was fascinating. Thank, Thank you. you. The magic of learning, literally, Kareeva. Magic Tony, ladies and gentlemen, yes. too, Thank by you, the Tony. way. Is that real salt, Tony? Real salt. Real salt. Uh, okay. <laughs> For now, I guess. Kareeva, over to you. That's awesome. We're going to have to watch the playback there on that trick so we can all learn how to I do know. it. Because I feel like if we just slowed it down a little bit, we'd have it. All right. Well, here